I am a physician. I'm a neonatologist. I practiced for 30 years uh, doing newborn intensive care, taking care of sick and premature newborns. And I became interested in Alzheimer's disease because my husband, Steve, developed early onset Alzheimer's with symptoms starting at age 51. And he was officially diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 54. So um, he was continuing to get worse over time and at uh, seven to eight years into this process, he was going downhill very quickly. He was on the verge of severe Alzheimer's, and we were trying to get him into two clinical trials, two different drugs, and I was looking at the risks and benefits of these two drugs the night before he was to be tested for the first trial, and I happened upon a press release for a medical food that was going towards FDA recognition. It was still about a year away, and it claimed to improve the memory and cognition of nearly half of the people who took it with Alzheimer's disease. And you don't hear that ever about Alzheimer's drugs. So I uh, thought this was worth looking more into and I found their patent application. And there I learned that Alzheimer's is a type of diabetes of the brain. There's insulin deficiency and insulin resistance, which translates into poor glucose uptake into brain cells, and brain cells need, like all of our cells, need fuel to work on. Um, so if you can't get glucose into the cell, is there an alternative fuel that could do that? And it turns out when you consume MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride oil, which is what this medical food was, your liver converts part of it to ketones, and ketones are taken up by the brain and can be used um, in the same areas of the brain affected by Alzheimer's that do not use glucose normally. So it can serve as an alternative fuel. So this seemed very logical to me, and I was familiar with MCT oil because of the type of physician that I am. We used to add it to the feedings of our tiniest premature newborns. These were babies under two pounds because they absorbed MCT oil very well and they would grow faster and get home faster. And then they started adding it to infant premature formulas. And then eventually, as coconut oil and, and palm kernel oil to all infant formulas, virtually all commercial infant formulas around the world have these, and they're trying to mimic make these medium chain triglycerides that are actually in breast milk. So I, I just found this fascinating as I was reading their patent application, and I learned about this the night before he was to try out for a clinical trial, and I didn't have time to do about anything about it. So we had a before and after, you know, day before and a day after he took coconut oil for the first time. I learned it was extracted from coconut oil, and Steve uh, tried out for the, the first clinical trial. He needed to get a score of 16 out of 30 points on a mini mental status exam to qualify, and he got only 14 points, and he did not qualify. And the doctor had him draw a clock, which is a um, traditional uh, test for Alzheimer's, and he drew just a few little uh, circles, random circles and a few numbers, and very disorganized, and the doctor told me he was on the verge of severe Alzheimer's. And so I thought, what do we have to lose? Uh, let's get some coconut oil, and, and when we got home, I learned everything I could about it. Uh, what the fatty acid composition was, and I figured out that if I gave him about 35 grams of coconut oil, which is a little over two tablespoons, that that would be equal to the dose of the medical food that they were studying. Um, I wasn't quite right about that, but at, at the time, that's what I came up with. And so the next day, he was scheduled to screen in the afternoon around 1 p.m. for the second clinical trial. And um, I gave him a little over two tablespoons of oatmeal in his breakfast, probably about four hours before he was tested. And um, he gained four points on the test. He remembered things like what the season was, what the day of the week, what town we were in, what floor we were on, even though it was a different location this time, different city. And he, he qualified for the trial. And so right away I thought, well, did we just really get lucky or was it really something to do with this coconut oil and ketones? Um, so we kept it going. And so I started giving it to him for breakfast every day, a measured dose, and then started cooking with it throughout the day. Uh, my rationale was, you know, the medical food was one dose a day, 20 grams of MCT oil, C8 specifically, um, called tricaprylic acid. and. Um, but the levels peak at about 90 minutes and then the ketones are gone after about three hours. And I thought, well, you know, somebody with Alzheimer's, 
their brain would need ketones 24 seven. So started cooking with it and giving it to them at other meals um, uh, throughout the day. And uh, we gradually worked up on that. And you know, right away within a matter of four to five days, it was obvious something had changed. He said it was like a light switch came on in his brain the day he started coconut oil. And he went from very depressed to very hopeful feeling that he had hope for his future, his mood was better, he was started joking, animation came back in his face, um, he had tremors that went away very quickly. Um, it was, you know, really profound. He could carry on a conversation better. He started whistling again, you know, um, and just able to do things easier is how he put it, and I could observe that. Um, and after maybe five days, you know, we looked at each other and we said, our life has changed. Something has changed for the better. It was quite profound. Two weeks after the, um, uh, Steve started the coconut oil, he drew another clock. And this time it was a full circle. It had all the numbers um, and it was messy, but it was a huge improvement. And I faxed the two clocks to Dr. Veach and he called me and he said, well, this is unexpected. <laughs> he said he thought uh, you would need levels of four to five millimoles of ketones and MCT through coconut oil at best was 0.3 to 0.5 millimoles, I mean a fraction of what he thought would be needed. He, um, we actually did levels on Steve, we uh, sent blood to the NIH, you know, testing coconut oil and then later MCT oil, and we saw that the MCT oil levels were higher, so he encouraged me to start giving him MCT oil and wanted me to stop the coconut oil, but I felt like maybe there's some other factor about coconut oil that's important and you know this helped him and what if it what if he goes backwards and I can't get him back you know so uh, I started mixing coconut and MCT oil and eventually slowly worked them up to um, uh, somewhere between 9 and 11 tablespoons a day and he just stopped he was already eating a Mediterranean type diet but he basically started eliminating the carbohydrates in his diet he would just leave the bread from a sandwich he would leave the rice leave the pasta and so I wasn't really eating much fruit at that point and he was devouring fruit before we started this <clears throat> so you know effectively he was on a ketogenic diet you know we couldn't prove it at the time because they we didn't have the handheld monitors to measure levels but um, I think that the combination of you know the coconut and MCT oil and then also you know effectively being on a ketogenic diet by virtue of how much fat he was eating um, played a really huge role and we just saw steady improvement you know in the beginning um, I think it was a fuel thing that very first day, you know, that ketones provide a fuel to his brain. But we know now that ketones have so many other properties, anti-inflammatory properties. Inflammation is a critical part of Alzheimer's disease. And we know now that coconut oil in and of itself reduces inflammation, but also ketones potently reduce inflammation by me uh, several different mechanisms. Um, so I think over time that that was a big factor in uh, his impro continued improvement and some of the other interesting things that happened about two months after we started the coconut oil, he, um, his gait normalized. He had been shuffling, walking very slowly. He couldn't pick up his feet and run and his gait just became normal and he could pick up his feet and start running again. And then um, around three to four months, he hadn't read for about a year and a half at that point and he announced that one day I can read again. And I said, well, why couldn't you read? And he said, the words were shaking on the page when I would look at it and that has stopped. And he said, now I can read again. And around nine to 10 months, he began to remember what he read earlier in the day. And one example was um, I had a doctor appointment and he sat in the waiting room. And then a few hours later, he said, uh, while you were in there, I read a story about Einstein and Scientific American. And, this, and he gave me details of the story. It was just quite profound. Um, that now uh, he, he couldn't even finish a sentence because he couldn't remember what he was saying before this. And now he could remember what he read several hours earlier. And he would say, the sunset's so beautiful tonight, it, it, maybe it's related to that volcano that happened two or three weeks ago. I mean, you know, that kind of thing started happening. And he improved so much that probably, I would say nine or 10 months after we started this, he was able to go back to volunteering. He wanted to volunteer, he wanted to work. 
So he became a volunteer in the hospital. He would put stickers on supplies and help deliver supplies to the different units in the hospital. And um, he was able to do that for quite a while. And he loved that because he felt useful again.